Welcome everyone to this collaborated session on MGDF preparation. I hope everyone is safe at home and this initiative done to motivate all doctors to read more during this uh, pandemic. Uh, so uh, basically we will cover lectures that are taking the Oxford Clinical Dentistry as the reference book because it's the main book for the MGDF and also for other examinations. I'm sorry for the delay due to some technical issues we are facing but i'm sure we will fix it soon inshallah let's start today we'll talk about prosthodontics in prosthodontics we will talk about geriatric patient changes in oral tissue and systematic also we will talk about fixed partial denture treatment planning and history and examination also we will talk about support and retention and the difference between them the parts of the bridge the connectors the pontex the finishing margins shade selections and we won't forget also the most important the steps for the practical uh, bridge or the bridge practical overview then we will talk about the failures and the removal of the old bridge and then we will talk about the resine bonded bridge when the patient is aging there will be some change within the cells those changes will be manifested as some reduction in the form of function or also in the biological activities that will appear as a signs and symptoms we can see we can see them either orally or systematically in general there will be a decrease in the microcirculation this is important stuff degrees also in the cellular reproduction degrees also in the repair of tissue degrees in the metabolic metabolic rate and those will lead to reduce healing or reduced wound healing then we will see increase in fibrosis the increase in fibrosis will lead to reduce elasticity so it will reduce the elasticity of the cells either muscular cells or other cells and it will lead to degeneration of elastic and nervous tissue orally we will see a decrease in the thickness of the epithelium thick degrees also in the thickness of the mucosa degrees also in the thickness of the submucosa and most importantly degrees in the taste bud function but on the other hand we will see an increase in the number of the so and, and in the number and size of the for these spots that it is the sebaceous glands that are lo located at the uh, buccal mucosa of the cheek we will see also increase in the number of the lingual varices and also increase in the number of the foliate papillae so recent studies and recent evidence suggested that the stimulated salivary flow rate does not fall purely as a result of age it's also have some other factors like medications in medications we can see the atropine and also we can see uh, we can see reduction in the salivary flow also in the head and neck radiotherapy or systematic diseases like sjorian syndrome so in the dental bulb as the patient is aging or old patients we will see increase in fibrosis vib and also decrease in the vascularity those will lead to decrease in the defensive capabil capabilities of the cells uh, in the pulp so the pulp capping in old patient will be less likely to succeed keep that in your mind this is important topic and also we will see an increase in the secondary dentine increase also in the pulp calcification which will lead to increase in the yellowish color of the teeth periodontum in periodontum ligament or periodontal ligament we will see increase in fibrosis reduced in the cellularity and also degrees in vascularity that will lead to make the periodontal ligament more susceptible to infections or to periodontitis and other uh, destructive uh, pathological issues before we thought that gingiva recession is only to be caused by age but now we know that it is 
a part of the periodontitis this is important also in dental heart tissue we will see the enamel permeability will be less by age and also older patient we will see their teeth becoming more brittle and but in the other hand the uh, elastic modulus or modulus of elasticity in the dentine will be the same uh, in old or young teeth we will see also occlusion of the dentinal tubules with calcified material will be increasing during age or with age <coughs> and also tooth wear is a common uh, age related phenomenon and would be regarded as physiological in many cases but if you saw it in highly excessive pathology uh, wear you can consider it as a pathological cause like proxism parafunction or others so we will see in the patient as he aged or she aged we will see bulbal changes including sclerosis and degrees of repair capacity of the pulp reduce manual dexterity making the patient unable to do the basic oral hygiene thus making him more susceptible to periodontal diseases in the systems as the patient is aging we will see more increase in hypertension and also the ischemic heart diseases will be increasing or worsen with time anemia also will be common in the elderly when those issues will be becoming a problem when we are considering some general anesthesia or our practice is on the second floor in the pulmonary system or respiratory system the lung capacity will be decreased with age and the patient will have more chronic obstructive diseases endocrine system we will see more diabetic will be more common and in the muscles the there will be a decrease in the bulk of the muscles slower contractions and less precision of control will be occurring of course those will aim and lead to make the patient more susceptible to be malnutrition under the malnutrition category why because he will be impaired there will be an impaired mobility and also as we said before there will be a decrease in taste due to a decrease in the functional or the function of the taste bud and also decrease in the mastication fact function and that will lead to a nutritional deficiencies in the elderly patients also those can manifest as a change in oral mucosa like example uh, change of the color of the tongue due to anemia and so on of course in systematic also in the immune system the patient will be more susceptible to infections and also he will be more susceptible to autoimmune disease because there will be a decreased number of the lymphocytes that will lead to also increase the incidence of the autoimmune diseases so if the patient is uh, old or elderly patient uh, and he have high risk for autoimmune you should always keep in your mind that he might be taking a steroid treatment so keep in your mind that this steroid treatment can complicate your dental treatment because you can't extract the patient extract the teeth for a patient who is under steroidal treatment unless you are doubling his dose why because of the adrenal crisis of course in nervous system aging will lead to some physiological decline in function and dysfunction and the dysfunction is associated with some diseases like parkinson strokes and so on we will see also mucosal diseases as the patient is aging like oral cancer squamous cell carcinoma lichen planus herpes zoster and also benign mucous membrane bimifigoid bimifigus 
because those are autoimmune and also candida will be seen more because they are unable to clean the or unable to have more oral hygiene and they are always a denture warrior with also an increase of immunodeficiencies this is a picture for herpes zoster and of course this is a picture for a patient with a candida so the question number one this is taken from past papers what is not related to normal normal aging process a progressive bone loss b reduce elasticity of the muscles c decrease elasticity of the skin and d lower pain there should so what do you think is the answer tell me then or write it in the comments now we are starting so the replacing of the teeth depend on so many factors those are some of the factors that we we should consider before starting replacing the teeth so we should know the number of the teeth to be replaced because in oxford it states the less number to have an a, 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 a functional dentition is 21 number teeth so if the patient have 21 number uh, 21 uh, teeth and he have a functional dentition and he has no any aesthetic concern so no need to replace and this question has appeared also in exams or in past paper exams as asking I will share it uh, in future with you guys so replacing the, the missing teeth also depend on the location either anterior or is it posterior and also the function whether for example the patient patient missing teeth are affecting his function or not and the most importantly is the patient wishes so you should keep your mind keep in your mind that the patient wishes you should keep it as the first thing always so what's the indications why we are replacing the missing teeth simply because we want to increase his mystication efficiency to improve his speech to uh, make a space maintaining for the uh, uh, for the spaces or the missing teeth and also restore the function uh, sorry restore the aesthetic improving the distribution of the closer louts and also preventing unwanted tooth movement because when we lose teeth there will be a movement of the teeth toward the space and also prepare the patient for a complete denture how how is that by giving him a removable partial denture as a transition so as a transition we will give him a removable partial denture he will be trained on this removable partial denture and he will be this uh, manner or this uh, treatment plan has been proven to be more effective by the patient because the patient was more accepting the treatment and more motivated to try the complete denture so in the treatment planning of the replacement of the uh, of the missing teeth we should take a delicate and exact history from the patient and this history should include many questions if for example we are asking about dentures we should ask the patient when you lost your teeth when you became edentulous uh, how many sets of dentures you have what the best one is uh, can you tell us what's the more successful one and why and uh, so many questions we should ask about um, the 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 previous dentures to know what to copy and what to not or what to correct in the future dentures also we should do exact or ask the patient for the past medical history any recent or previous strokes any uh, neurological deficits uh, like for example any neurological diseases uh, Parkinson uh, the patient for example having like uh, uh, arthritis those could give us 
an uh, important alarm lines or red alarms to know what we should expect from the patient if the patient is unable to do the basic oral hygiene instruction it is a contraindicated to give the patient a, a denture when he can't even place it or replace it or remove it and he can't even uh, do a basic oral hygiene over it then we will ask the patient the social history the social history is important to know the economical status of the patient will he be able to pay the cost and also we should ask the patient his educational level and also uh, educational level and other uh, important like transportations uh, the transportation will give us an indication whether the patient is able to uh, to come in multiple appointments and he he will never miss any uh, of those of course then we will do a clinical examination this clinical examination will start it as extra oral examination we will check the symmetry of the faces the muscle tenderness the f even when the patient is just started to enter to our clinic we will see his gait his stature how is how does he have like a uh, movement uh, uh, problems like he, uh, does he like a does he like he have like a physical disabilities and so on then we will uh, check the uh, intraoral we will check for the teeth the uh, for example any abutments that we're going to select to be act like a support the situation of those abutments in case of complete denture we will check the ridge the ridge form the compressibility of the ridge we will check uh, any movable tissue uh, those like flaggy uh, flabby sorry flabby ridges we should always check before uh, commencing anything of course then we will do st special investigation special investigation will be referring to uh, x-rays sensitivity tests those specially are used for fixed partial denture and then we will reach our diagnosis so what's what 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 is the options to replace the missing teeth one no replacement as we said before some of the patient may don't want maybe they are accepting uh, their aesthetic and they don't have any aesthetic requirements they are able to eat naturally they don't have like a degrees of mastication efficiency maybe their number of the missing teeth is not less than 21 so it is within the range so the patient even he can't pay those are um, uh, choices so one of them is no replacement two is bridges we will talk in details about that then we have implant supported procedures it is one of the good uh, uh, selections why because it will avoid any preparation for the natural teeth and it will uh, protect the socket and the bone around it so uh, but it should it have like a surgical procedure and sometimes it's expensive on some patients we have then the removal partial denture especially if we have like a multiple edentulous areas which are which are moderate to long edentulous it's not like small edentulous or complete immediate denture or complete denture so what's the factors that are affecting the selection of the removal partial denture fixed partial denture or even implant so general factors that are affecting our choice to select is the first thing is the motivation you should always check check the patient motivation some of the patient are indifferent so even if you did the best denture to him he won't he won't be satisfied so you should keep that in your mind there is a good classification of the personality of the patients who are seeking for a denture treatment called house classification i suggest all of you to pass through it it's very good classification 
so then we will check also the one of them are uh, of the general factors that can affect the selection like age health occupation cost some of the patient can't pay for implants so they uh, can select fixed some of them can't pay for fixed and also implant so they, we will go for them with the removable and so on and oral hygiene locally and we have local factors like oral hygiene and periodontal health how's the periodontal health is it good is it really bad shape or and so on the number of the missing teeth the position of the missing teeth the occlusion of the patient does the patient for example have a parafunctional uh, habits thus uh, thus could it could affect the uh, future uh, bridge or denture especially the bridge uh, the condition of the potential abutments any restrations on it and so on the uh, any endodontic uh, therapy uh, how is the uh, the amount of the sound abutment is available the amount of the clinical crown and so on and then we have the length of span we said that for example in short spans we can use uh, bridges or fix it fix it or fix it rem removal partial denture fix it partial denture I'm sorry and then we have the degree of the resorption so before starting any treatment you should explain detail in details to the patients the advantage and disadvantage of each you should manage your expectation of the uh, manage expectation of the patient clearly and honestly and also you should have a informed consent before starting or commencing anything initial treatment will, will start with relieving any pain extracting any teeth with bad prognosis giving the patient oral hygiene instruction and starting any periodontal treatment that are required starting to design the primary design of the uh, partial denture carry out any restorations that are required and removal of any pathological abnormalities or impacted teeth could affect our uh, future uh, fixed partial denture or denture and pre-prosthetic surgery like alveoplasty and removal of uh, maxillary tori and uh, removal of any uh, bones uh, bone undercuts or soft tissue undercuts that could affect our uh, denture or fixed partial denture this is a, a, a picture for the bridge everyone know what is the bridge so here we have the abutments it is part of the tooth that will be prepared to take or to come in contact with the retainer so it will help the retainer to um, it will act like abutment to the retainer and we have then the connectors those connectors could be rigid and could be non-rigid rigid for example we're going to use the rigid and the non-rigid in the run in the non-rigid we can use it in the non-parallel abutment or any case we want like a stress breaker and the rigid we can use it as even for splinting periodontal splint if the tooth is moderately having some periodontal uh, disease the saddle is this area the re retainer it is the part of the bridge that will come in contact with the abutment so the retention it's the resistance to the dislodgement of the bridge in the way along the way of the path of insertion so this way when you are trying to remove the bridge from here up to here this is the retention and sh it should have minimum retention especially without the cement and we have the resistance which is the uh, resistance to dislodgement of the bridge under occlusal forces or apical forces or also oblique forces so the units are the number the total number of the pontics 
and also the retainers so in this case we have three two retainers sorry two retainers and we have one bone tick the support we can uh, gain the support from the uh, periodontal ligament and the bone so the fixed partial denture indications when we should use it in short span edentulous arches in the presence of and some sound teeth that can give us a sufficient support and in cases when the removal partial denture is contraindicated and it is one of the indications to fix the partial denture the patient preference So this is another picture for the fix, uh, fixed partial denture or bridge. So after doing the uh, diagnostic mock-up and diagnostic mounting and uh, the mock-up and the impressions and uh, before starting the preparation, we should do the temporary provisional within the lab for the indirect technique within the lab why because when we finish the preparation it's better for example especially for bridges uh, it will be better to have uh, a temporary provisional that will be covering the teeth after the preparation because it will give us pulpal protection it will give us also positional stability after preparation the teeth or the tooth will lose some of it is part and this could lead to some movement uh, as we know the teeth can move and also it will maintain and give us a picture and over over overview picture of the uh, functional uh, occlusion for the patient how is the patient is is the patient for example is satisfied with this new temporary that is present inside the mouth we can uh, adjust it if any problem appears it should be easily cleaned it does not it should not for example uh, help to any uh, accumulation of uh, black and it should also have non impinging margins of course it should be str strong enough and have some retention and it should also give a picture of the aesthetic also so the custom indirect technique for making the provisionals or the temporary it's better than the uh, direct technique because it is more it is more accurate it is more better fit it could protect the pulp and also uh, because of the myth methyl acrylate or polymethyl myth acrylate uh, when it is placed on the fresh cut dentine it could lead to pulpal uh, irritation and also thermal irritation due to the exothermic reaction exothermic reaction from the polymethyl myth acrylate during the setting so we have retention in the crowns and we said before that retention of the crown that will be be uh, the prevent or the resistant of the removal of the restoration or the bridge along the path of insertion or the long axis of the preparation it will be achieved from the buccolingual buccolingual or the mesodistal uh, surfaces vertical surfaces and the tooth preparation taper <coughs> sorry so the tooth preparation taper should be kept as minimum as five per five degree why because if you increase the taper make it more taper it means you will reduce the retention keep that in your mind as you increase the taper you will reduce your retention of course the greater surface area of contact between the abutment and also the retainer means more retention so in case of for example in short crowns the length of the uh, of the bridge or the abutment is small so it means that you won't have greater surface of preparation for attachment thus meaning you will have less retention and in those cases we are doing some 
groves either buccally and mesodistally keep in your mind maximum retention can be achieved when there is only one path of withdrawal when you have one only one path of withdrawal to remove the bridge you will have maximum retention the resistance is the prevent of the dislodgement of the bridge uh, by forces that will be uh, apical, oblique, or underocclusal forces. As we said before, the guiding grooves could be placed uh, on the crown preparation to provide more retention and to prevent the rotation, especially in the short crown. So, the crown margins, the, those are the finishing line of the preparation. We we have the bevel or the feather edge the bevel or the feather edge is the best finishing line could be used for the full cast uh, gold restorations but they are difficult to be read from the impression and they have also the least marginal strength the chamfer on the other hand uh, it is also could be used for the full gold restorations and also it could be used for the BFMs or porcelain fused metal. The shoulder is the best one that to be used for all porcelain Emax restoration. It's the number one finishing line because it will give us the enough uh, enough room for the uh, porcelain to give it more uh, strength. And uh, the radial shoulder is the radial shoulder this is the picture of the radial shoulder it's a modified form of the shoulder it has like a rounded angle of the exu gingival uh, lines or walls so the heavy chamfer also it could be used for all ceramic crowns but it's not good as, shol as shoulders we can also add a bevel can be added also for the metal restoration the shoulder with the bevel it's a shoulder it will have a bevel I will show you a picture of it this is the bevel so it will allow a sliding fit this in this area it will allow a sliding fit at the margins thus it be, may be used for a proximal box of inlays and the closal shoulders of the mandibular three quarter qu crowns or the labial margins of the BFMs this is a video this is the feather edge and this is the chamfer you can see the finishing lines on the left side or the on the feather edge or the bevel it is sub gingval the margins and on the right side on the chamfer it is almost subra gingval or gingval those are illustrations for the crown margins we have the shoulder we have the beveled shoulder as we said you can see then you have the bevel this is the heavy chamfer and you have then the chamfer porcelain shade selection we know the porcelain compressive strength is greater than the tensile or shear strength so the compressive strength is known this is the compressive strength and this is the tensile strength okay so uh, the dental porcelain is brittle and they're small uh, thickness so that we are using shoulder to give it enough room to perform it is characteristic of good st compressive strength and we have three types of dental porcelain. We have the high fusion porcelain <coughs> that are used to manufacture the denture, denture teeth. We have the medium fusing porcelain that will be used for all ceramic and porcelain jackets. We have also the low fusion uh, porcelain that are used for metal ceramic. We add uh, the aluminum oxide agent to give the, to the low fusing porcelain to give the resistance to the material to the slumping down during firing so shade is this of, of ceramic uh, crown is matched first based on the color's value chroma then hue 
so the value it means the intensity or the intensity of the color or the lightness and brightness of the color lightness or darkness of the color so uh, this is the first thing to select and match then we will have the chroma chroma it means it means the saturation of the color and also uh, we can make shade matching here on, in the chroma aspect using the uh, increasing some stains and also we have the hue those are the basic colors like red blue white uh, sorry yellow green and other colors what are the uh, sources of light that are used in the dental office the best one is the natural light so don't use any other light uh, to select the porcelain shade and do not place your uh, rubber dam uh, you should select the shade before even you start your uh, start your preparation do not place any rubber dam remove the uh, the teeth should be clean and also remove any makeup from the patient face question number three what the most common cause for porosity in the jacket crown is a moisture contamination b excessive firing temperature c failure to annul uh, the platinum matrix the excessive condensation of the porcelain and e inadequate porcelain condensation select and tell me after that we are uh, we will talk about the bridge types we will talk uh, about the fixed 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 movable direct cantilever spring cantilever minimum bonded resin and compound the compound should contain two both of those types of bridge any more than one type and removable it's the removal it is used in the uh, in the cleft belate patient or cleft lip belate patient uh, because uh, the it could be removed only by the dentist so it's fixed but will be removed by the dentist only so the fixed fixed is a pointing that will be anchored to the retainer uh, with the rigid connectors so both sides we will have rigid connectors you can see here those are rigid connectors okay so both abutments the both abutments will give us support and also retention and also you have to have a barrel should be barrel and also they have a single line of withdrawal so the the path of uh, removal should be the same so we have again the uh, fixed movable fixed movable we will have one is rigid connector and the other will be non rigid connector so here we will we will get our support and retention from the rigid part from the abutment toward the rigid part and we will get only support from the non-rigid part those will give us a minor movement on the minor connector on the minor abutment so we will have here a minor movement those are used when they are when the preparation is not parallel direct cantilever the bontic will be anchored at one end of the dental span only it has the most highest lever action because if the patients bite here the bridge could move to the other side the force would leave the bridge moving to the other side like this uh, and we have then the spring cantilever the spring cantilever is re it's really used right now it's old one so basically it's an uh, fixed from here uh, complete coverage for one teeth of the posterior teeth then a bar will move till to replace the anterior teeth it's that simple so minimum resin bonded as we said we have a lot of types right now example of that is the maryland bridge and ruchiti uh, so uh, they are bontic but they have like a metal wings currently they are using uh, porcelain or some other of types of resin uh, and some of them need uh, preparation some of them needs a little or minimum amount of preparation 
It depends on the type of the minimum regime bridge. What is the type of retainers? As we said before, the type the retainers means the the part of the bridge that will be coming in contact with the abutment. I'm sorry, my my drawing isn't that good. So this is the retainer. It's a part of the bridge. Okay. So what what do you have? What's the types of the retainers? We have first the full coverage. It's the most retentive. We have the three quarter, and then we have the post retained, onlay, and inlay. Those are least retentive. And mostly the only and illy are used with a, a movable uh, connector. So mostly they're going to be used in like uh, fixed movable. So they are will be in the movable part. Selection of the abutments. How to select your abutment based on what? So uh, there is some, many co factors could affect that. But in general, you have to select it accordingly. The sound of the teeth. Uh, the amount of any carries previously and the existing restorations uh, also should be undertaken and also the most important is the retention to be undertaken from those abutments and also the support what does that mean so the retention the larger the teeth the most the most the more retention you're gonna get okay so you should choose the larger teeth to get more retention always those are uh, like from the greatest you have in the maxilla the sixth the second molar the first premolar second premolar canine central incisor lateral incisor so this is for the maxilla and for the mandible six the same so the six is the greater or the greatest of all arches maxilla and mandible and then you will have the second premolar, the second, sorry, second molar, then second premolar, first premolar, canine, uh, lateral incisor, then central incisor. Those are the retention. So here we are talking about retention. And the retention will depend on the vertical surfaces and the amount of the greater surface contact between the abutment and the retainer. In assessment after that, we will do some assessment of the support of the abutment. There are three factors that are very important to consider. A or one, you have the crown root ratio. Uh, two to three is, ex is ideal, but one to one is acceptable. As the bone is lost, you will have more lever action on the supporting tissue. In, in root configuration, widely splayed roots will provide more support than fused one. So if you see an X-ray with widely splayed roots, it means you will get more support. And also periodontal surface area. In periodontal surface area, we always knew the NT's law, which is the combined surface area or combined periodontal surface area of the abutment teeth should be at least the same or greater than the teeth that will be replaced but it has no scientific basis keep that in your mind why because it does not take an ac into account that we are dealing with a biological system as the loud is increased on the abutment teeth there is a biofeedback mechanism operates to cause a reduction in that loud This is a diagram to uh, give you a picture on the assessment of the support. You have the first molar as the greatest, second premolar in the maxilla, second molar, canine here, first premolar, second premolar, center incisor, then the lateral incisor. And here you have the first, first molar, second molar, canine, second premolar, first uh, premolar lateral incisor and central incisor 
Taber and parallelism. This is important. So, uh, if you have five ta per five degree uh, of taper, it's uh, good for your retention. But if your taper is increasing, if it is increased, it will lead to reduce in retention. So always keep in mind that you have to keep the taper. Um, minimum you shouldn't increase the taper too much because you're gonna lose your retention you're gonna lose the axial surfaces that will come in contact directly with the retainers because they will have like angle converging angle so uh, for the most this abutment design should be prepared with a common line of uh, withdraw or draw so how you can check the parallelism you can check it with direct vision or you can check it with one eye using a survey mirror with the barrel and lines inscribed you can see it with one eye close your one uh, eye and see with the mirror and you're gonna see if there is um, there is a parallelism or not this is between the two abutments what is the Pontex ideal requirements so to restore the function of the two that will be which are replacing it should provide us a good aesthetic it should be biocompatible it should not embank on tissue and should not cause any allergic reaction and also should permit effective oral hygiene Pontic designs we have uh, the modified ridge lab so this Pontic actually will have the minimum contact with the buccal aspect of the ridge it will give us good aesthetic and also it's the most popular one so the most popular one is the modified ridge lap then that we'll have the bullet the bullet will have a make point contact on the tip of the ridge it can be used for the posterior bridge work why because it because it have low aesthetic and it have also good hygiene because you can clean under it the ovate aim to address the issue of emergence in profile especially it can be used the ovate in the anterior region uh, because when after the extraction of the teeth you can insert the uh, part of the bone tick inside those sockets with the limits of course so uh, it has the greater mucosal contact and apply the light uh, pressure to the underlying mucosa it needs also a need a smooth convex surface smooth and convex surface to a low flossing and the patient also should be uh, have excellent oral hygiene the hygienic one will not contact the saddle therefore supposed supposedly it can it will be easy to clean but still can be challenging and it's also an aesthetic therefore it's only only will be limited to the molar replacements in the posterior segment we know the saddle or the ridge lap is the um, one that should not be used it's um, not recommended why because it's, it will be extend over buccal of the ridge buccally and also lingually therefore it will be difficult to clean this is the pictures you have the first one the sanitary hygienic we said it is good for the posterior segment because it will be easy to clean you can clean under it then you have the saddle ridge lab or we can call it the ridge lab this is not recommended no area to clean but it has advantage to be aesthetic the conical or the bullet it has a smooth surface as we said convex smooth surface it will make a point contact with the ridge and it will be used in the um, uh, molar region it will be good also for oral hygiene but poor aesthetic the modified ridge lab is the popular one it will be high aesthetic requirements it will be used in the posterior and interior reg uh, region and it will be good aesthetic and it will be easy to clean the ovate as we said it will be used in the maxillary incisor and cuspid and premolar it will be superior aesthetic as there is emergence from the profile 
and also be negligible uh, food entrapment and easy of cleaning and will be requiring surgical preparation because we said it's always occurring after extractions so in bridge design you have to assess the prognosis of all teeth to decrease the risk of another tooth to that to be requiring extraction in the new f in the near future you should know and uh, do your assessment clearly and exactly to prevent any future extractions of the abutment teeth that you're going to use for example if you have good tooth you shouldn't use the other tooth as abutment like it uh, it is for example the situation of the other tooth is very bad like um, severe periodontal ligament disease and so on so uh, you should progno have a prognosis on those teeth and extract if needed before starting any uh, bridge design also uh, assess your possible abutment teeth check your restorations endodontic sets of the tooth periodontal condition mobility take also periapical x-rays select the retainers designs as we said it's easier either it is for a full or partial three quarter or uh, only or inlay for the coverage is preferred why because it's the most so here you're gonna consider the bone text also and the connectors either it will be uh, what bone text tapes like ovate ridge lab modified ridge lab and others uh, according to your clinical situation and either it is the connector will be like rigid or non rigid you should know that and you know when you're gonna use the rigid and non rigid as we said if you got like a non parallel uh, abutments you're gonna use the non rigid and the other uh, rigid you're gonna use it if there is a good parallelism and also in cases of uh, severely or weakened abutment to distribute the closer louts specific problems we are facing during abutment uh, d or d during bridge design if you got a periodontal weakened uh, abutment so first you have to control your periodontal disease so oral hygiene instruction and also a periodontal treatment you can you can use the fixed fixed type of design prefer preferred why because it will be splinting the teeth together also you can use the resin reinforced bridge it can be used to supplant also consider that the beer abutments the beer abutments it is it is the central abutment that will be on both sides are identical area with abutments in the both ends also so to be one abutment then you will have identical area then you will have another abutment then identical area then another abutment this is the beer abutment So in this situation, the beer abutments can act like a fulcrum when one part of the bridge is loaded, the retainer on the other end experience an unseating which can lead to cementation failure. This is one of the problems that you're going to face with the beer abutments. If there is a pressure here, there will be, it will act here like a fulcrum. So you're going to uh, there will be here like unseating so the cement will be having a debonding or a de a cementation failure so to overcome this either you're going to use stress breaking elements must be introduced either you're going to do here a non-rigid non connector or you're going to simplify your design by extracting the beer abutment so tilted abutment it's also one of the problem you're going to face so tilted abutment exactly and surely you can do a uh, orthodontic treatment to upright those abutments it's the best choice or you're gonna use two part bridge like fixed mobile or you're gonna use telescopic crowns what is the telescopic crowns this is the telescopic crowns uh, it is a, a, a coping this is the coping and this is the original preparation so you're gonna prepare the teeth normally but not parallel to each other not parallel to each other then you're gonna place a telescopic coping over that preparation the, then you're gonna do your impressions and everything and this will be fixed to the teeth then you're gonna place your bridge over those copings over this coping especially so uh, as we said it will be placement of individual gold shell or you can use some other uh, uh, metals also 
so a precision attachment it is a uh, simply it is a precision screw and screw tube that can be incorporated into two part bridge after cementation the screw is inserted and it will be uh, uh, converted then to a fixed fixed design so this is the solution for tilted abutments so you have the orthodontic treatment you have two part bridge either fixed and movable fixed and movable and also you have the telescopic uh, crown and precision attachment using screws and screw tube so this is as we said the telescopic crown with coping the canines so the canine is the often is the keystone in the arch so it will be considered one of the problems during the bridge, bridge uh, design why is that because it's very difficult to uh, replace often it's often subjected to a high level of stress and uh, especially in the lateral exclusions and other uh, functional movement so if the canine is to be replaced with a bridge you have to take your scheme to provide a group occlusal scheme to provide a group function in the lateral exclusion do not use a canine guidance at all if you are replacing the canine why is that because you're gonna this this uh, occlusal scheme in the group function the global uh, the group function occlusal scheme will reduce the stress over the canine during function question number i don't know two or th four so which is the best cantilever bridge to use for a missing maxillary canine and the abutment will be best on so what is the best cantilever bridge for missing canine so the abutments will be on a both premolar b lateral incisor and central incisors c lateral incisors only d first premolar bridge practical states first you will do the diagnostic mounting you're gonna take impressions for both arches and you will take also a face bow record then those models will be placed in the intercuspal positions and on semi articulator semi adjustable articulator the intercuspal uh, position is the best after that you will check for any occlusal uh, interference and should be careful uh, maintain or examine also the occlusion and uh, you should know also what's the occlusal consequences that will be proposed on your restoration you will have after that you will do a diagnostic waxing it means that you will take a mock-up for the final uh, restorations so uh, a wax will be added to uh, form uh, the uh, temporary bridge that you are trying to form after you uh, do the after you did the wax up you will take an impression with a silicone body this will act as your guide or index uh, and you will form from it the uh, provisional bridge after that you're gonna do the preparation of course before starting anything in the preparation you will try to to take care of any suspected restorations on the abutment teeth should be replaced and uh, uh, after that you will do your preparation according to the basic principles and ensure you have one or single bath of insertion because single bath of insertion will give you the maximum uh, retention also you have to check the parallelisms by using one eye closed as we said before using also the mirror after that you will do your temporary bridge of course it's normally constructed using the matrix that you formed or the index from the diagnostic uh, waxing and after that uh, the matrix will be filled with one of the proprietary temporary crown bridge resins pro temp like pro temp and it will be seated over the preparation after it has been set to be removed a trimmed polished and cemented with a temporary cement like tembo tembo band of course this is the direct measure direct measure over the uh, over the teeth or you can use also lab me lab made uh, temporary bridge after that you will take your impressions is taking using an elastomeric material ideally all the preparation should be captured in one impression but this is could be difficult if multiple preparation are involved if a difficulties also uh, are encountered in this respect they can often be overcome using a transfer coping technique in this technique you're gonna take acrylic duralay uh, coping are made on the dies of the preparation from which a successful impression can be achieved 
also you can use also the CAD CAM digital techniques if you got them so close the registration in the under the most circumstances the model will be mounted in intercuspid position for the best of fit after that you will do your metal trying if porcelain fused to metal is being constructed it's advisable always to check the metal before frame framework metal framework before and after that you will do your trial uh, cementation in this uh, uh, step you will try uh, the finished bridge will be tried and any any necessary adjustment will be made the bridge should be temporarily cemented with a modified uh, timber bond like zinc oxide you know, in general for a period of a week this is will be a trail and also the patient should be instructed how to clean the bridge using uh, floss or uh, mouthwash after that if everything is good you will do your permanent cementation using uh, a resin modified glass ionomer cement or using glass ionomer cement or uh, polycarboxylate and after that you will do you will do the recall for the patient to check that bridge is still functioning or not so what is the bridge failures patient should be warned about this period to the treatment crown and bridge is responsible for the greatest proportion of negligence claims against dentists so the most common of the failure are loss of the retention mechanical failure like fracture of the casting problem with the abutment teeth like secondary caries periodontal disease or loss of vitality and one of the most uh, one survey has been concluded to give us an, a picture of the most common of the uh, failure is occurring due to loss of vitality management of the failed bridge so it will depend upon the type and extent of the problems you can keep it under review for example or adjust or repair in situ while the bridge is in the same uh, position in the mouth without removable uh, without removing the bridge like for example if there is a minor uh, fracture of the uh, or chip out of the uh, porcelain you can uh, place uh, some materials that are specific to uh, fix the uh, porcelain or you can replace it so uh, first careful analysis of the reason of the failure it's necessary second you have to uh, check uh, if there is a minor uh, failure like fractured porcelain can be fixed in office using a special kit called cogit so secondary caries or marginal def defects can be treated using a, a glass ionomer i said before the survey in sweden has been found that uh, 93 of the bridges was still in service most of common uh, failure was uh, reasons was the loss of vitality but it won't necessitate the removal of the bridge because you can do the uh, endodontic treatment through the, through the crown so removing of the old bridge to remove intact you should try a sharp tap at the cervical margin of the bridge with a chisel or uh, preferably using a slide hammer as the picture you can also use the orthodontic band removal pliers can be used this will be requiring a small cut in hole a uh, cut or a hole in the closest surfaces if if only one retainer is loose you have to support the bridge in position while trying to remove it because so that it does not bind also you have to cut the bridge if you are using for example using a special uh, special bear uh, especially if you are trying to replace the old bridge So resin bonded bridge. This technique will be involving bonding a cast me a cast metal uh, framework with a ceramic framework. Also carrying out uh, a bontic tooth to abutment using an adhesive resin. It's best to be used. So always put in mind that the resin bonded bridge best to be uh, used as a cantilever design. Why is that? Because fixed fixed under function can be debonded can be debonded from one side leading to failure and ex uh, after that it could lead to uh, caries so this is a classification of the resin bonded that we have the position it could be anterior or posterior the, posterior, the anterior is the best you have macro mechanical you have micro mechanical and you have uh, chemically etched so the macro mechanical you have the perforated uh, rochetti traditional uh, as the picture you can see it in the picture you have the mesh clit uh, or bond 
and you have that particular that called crystal bond but i didn't found any pictures for both you have the micro mechanical which is uh, commonly used uh, right now it's the maryland or electrolytically etched that's the maryland and you have also chemically etched like sand blasted or tin blated uh, uh, solution So what is the advantage of the resin bonded? It's less expensive. Minimum no teeth preparation are required. No local anesthesia are required because you are almost working in the enamel. And it has a potential for rebond. So if the debond happen and you knew it and the patient has also know uh, that there is a debond, he can come and uh, you can rebond it. The disadvantage are the tendency to debond, especially if you're using a uh, uh, fixed fixed. So always uh, put in mind this will be best utilized as a, a simple cantilever or one cantilever. And meter also uh, this is one of the disadvantage are the meter can show through the abutments and this is could be a, a aesthetically a problem to the patient, especially if it's in the anterior region. <clears throat> so what's the indication for the resin bonded bridge it's indicated in short span single tooth identical space sometimes they can use it for more but it's the best for single span single tooth it should that both abutments should be or one of the abutments should be sound tooth without any problems and also you have to have a, a favorable occlusion because indeed uh, overbite sometimes is contraindicated because of the force that could lead to debonding or even to the space you can you don't have enough space that means you're gonna take a lot of the two structure lingually so it's f you have to check uh, if there is a favorable occlusion or not in the contraindication it's contraindicated in deep of vertical overbite is extensive caries uh, severe mobility of the tooth uh, and also nica sensitivity you uh, put in mind that we can use the resin bonded bridge sometimes for um, moderate mobility teeth or a periodontal uh, teeth um, periodontally involved teeth uh, to make it uh, to splint them and this is one of the solution uh, for the mobility teeth uh, of course the treatment planning is as the conventional bridge work if ortho treatment are required retain if if you are if you are doing ortho treatment for example to gain some space you have to retain the result with the retainer for three months at least and then you will commence your uh, uh, resume bonded bridge the, of course the design is usually cantilever fixed fixed as we said uh, could be used if the periodontal splinting is required and also tooth preparation is a debatable uh, issue so it will be defined according to the individual clinical situation and the judgment of the clinician so guidelines for preparation if you are preparing for a resine bonded bridge uh, of course it should be minimum uh, invasive and it should be always giving you the single bath of insertion that will give you more retention and so you have to get a near parallel guidelines uh, guiding lines thus eliminating any undercuts also so you have also to provide space in occlusion to accommodate the bridge you have to have at least lingually 0.7 milli uh, for the wings and of course you can increase your retention retention using a wrap around design covering almost more than 180 degree of the tooth and that will act to resist the lateral displacement and also to reduce your stress over the cement bond of course you can place the mesial and distal grooves to enhance uh, the resistance form and also to prevent uh, the gingival displacement you can add also a minimum chamfer lingually is recommended and also put in mind all of them are margins are supra gingival here so also you can provide axial loading of the abutment prepare the cingulum or you can place some closer rests the tooth preparation should always confined only to the enamel with the maximum coverage to increase the surface area available for bonding 
the technique that are using used for the resin bridge called uh, one of them called the chemical method using the banavia so the banavia actually is a chemical uh, uh, bonding technique so first you will take uh, elastomeric uh, elastomeric uh, impression uh, of the abutment teeth and you will take another impression also for the uh, opposing arch using an alginate impression at the try end stage the bridge should be assessed for fit aesthetic of course and also the fitting surface should be cleaned with alcohol but you can't here assess the occlusion until after cementation contamination of any fitting surface with saliva should be avoided and also always you should do it under the rubber dam uh, following your etching and washing of the abutments and placement of dentine adhesive system the wings of the bridge are coated with banavia and the bridge will be seated and held firmly uh, to sit you can use acetate strips or floss at this stage remove the excess of cement and also you have to use or you can use the oxy guard the oxy guard will prevent the auto inhibition surface layer after five minutes or so you can remove your rubber dam and any excess cement will be removed so we got some problems with the resin bonded bridge one of them are the dentine exposing during some preparation and if so you can use a dentine adhesive system and you have also sometimes appearing like a metal shining through the abutment you can cut uh, the wing away incisely before cementation or you can use some opaque cement or if you if you couldn't if you couldn't uh, solve the problem you can use a conventional bridge if there is a debond of course of if one flank only you can always detach the other by a sharp tap by using a chisel or using an ultrasonic uh, scalar tip if uh, the problem is persistent consider conventional bridge if caries occurring under the debonded bridge remove the bridge and repair